Hello friends and family. It is August 29th, Saturday. <laughs> and I wanted to talk a little bit about Pali, although it's more about the English translation today. Uh, the line in Pali, Sabbe Sankara Anicca Ti. Ti is, uh, it's actually kind of a postfix quote character. So you're essentially saying that the rest of uh, those other three words are in quotes. And they translate effectively into English as impermanent are all compounded things. And I've actually had um, philosophically Buddhist friends religiously Buddhist friends, use this phrase on me um, as a sort of mantra or motto. I, don't worry, impermanent are all compounded things. Um, and it is important for us to be aware that this is not a motto. Um, this is not a philosophy. It's obvious. It's very obvious. That like, okay, between the Big Bang and the Big Crunch, or however the universe chooses to die, everything will come to its end. Um, an astrophysicist can tell you this, but so can a stop motion camera, really. And seeing that everything on the outside is impermanent is not particularly helpful. Um, it, it might be an informative philosophy, but it's not really uh, it's not really informing our decisions. It's just informing our mental framework. So we we will remind ourselves like, oh, my book was stolen or my bike was stolen. Or, oh, it was going to dissolve anyway. <laughs> Let me not get too upset about my stolen book or my stolen bike. Um, this is not what is meant. So certainly try not to get upset about the things which are happening outside, but a lot of how upset or not we get about our attachment to impermanent things, ourselves, our body included, right? Or perhaps number one. Um, we fear death because we don't want this thing to go away. Um, that the idea of impermanence is not really that valuable. It's kind of a very initial starting point to say, oh yeah, okay, this is true. Everything I'm looking at will sooner or later dissolve the thoughts and feelings I have will sooner or later dissolve. They'll become something else. They'll morph into something else. And so will I. Um, but the intent of these three simple words, sabbe, sankara, anicca, ti, <laughs> four words, is that we can explore that impermanence, that we can investigate it objectively and with curiosity. We can go see, okay, what is it that is impermanent? Okay, I can, I can see the world around me coming apart, coming undone, the leaves fall from the trees and uh, an old dog dies, <laughs> all these sorts of things. Um, but that is not the exploration. That's an intellectual understanding. The exploration is done internally. And with Anapana, it's only done here. Um, so there's this small space under the nose and uh, it's perhaps a strange way to explore the idea of impermanence, but it is 
extremely direct. So you can feel first the breath and then other things underneath your nostrils and know that the sensations within your body are not lasting. And this is a huge and important basis for everything else that you will do in your meditation career to explore this idea that, okay, this sensation, whatever it happens to be, some itching, some humidity, um, is disappearing. And compared to the imagery of maybe it's a really loved dog, right? The old dog dying under a tree with leaves falling on it. Like there's something very romantic and beautiful about that itching under your nose, much less so. Um, and it is the painfully boring ordinariness of meditation that makes it so valuable because it's not a painting, it's not a photograph, it's not an artsy French film. <laughs> it's just what is real. It's just what is true. Um, and for that reason, it is worth exploring. I hope everyone is taking good care of themselves. I hope you're taking good care of everyone around you. I will talk to you tomorrow, Sunday. Goodbye.